Well, after the most uninspiring transfer window in the history of the world yesterday, today we start life in the National League at the new home of football. Knowing that we haven't actually improved the team at all, but then it is a team that beat Arsenal last season, so did we need to improve it? Hello and welcome to part 37 of It's Coming Home, I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode we have our first two games of the National League season away against Swindon and then at home against Dagenham and Redbridge. Um, yeah, if you didn't watch the transfer special yesterday, oh that was last season, this summer we haven't done very much and you'll see when you see the team that actually it's probably a weaker team than played at Wembley in the FA Trophy final, certainly that back four is weaker than what played in the FA Trophy final. The one... Bright, actually, no, no, that's not fair. He's not the one bright hope. One of the bright hopes of the summer, though, um, is Lerick Fernandez, who's been here for a little while. He came through our youth system, but he's kind of exploded. He's done a Mick Powell. Lerick Fernandez has done a Mick Powell. And if we go on to squad and sort them by ability, the full squad, he's or he was our best player until we brought in Adam Civita on loan. He's better than Mick Powell, though, apparently. So we need to change it. You don't do a Mick Powell anymore. You do a Leric Fernandez. So this is the team for the first game of the new season. Do we want him to be attacking? I don't think we do. I think we probably want him to do that. Uh, this is our team. We've got Civita in goal. And back for Critchlow Noble, Carter, Collie and Diallo. With Phillips as our ball-winning midfielder. Fernandez and Smith in midfield. With Cottrell, Powell and Stanley leading the attack. It's got a very Northern Premier League feel to it. Uh, a lot of the improvements that we made as part of our promotion season, Clark and Broom and Vaughan and Wolf. I mean, Wolf's still here, to be fair. Um, but uh, Ian Dolo, Pozo, none of them are here. We've gone back to the team that successfully won the Northern Premier League the year before. Well, it did win the FA Trophy, though. So again, it's not that this is a terrible team. This is a team that has got potential to be good on its day. But we'd certainly need to strengthen and we are going to be continuing to bring players in as we move through the first few months of this season, just like we have over the last few years. The media are looking for the media are expecting a mid table finish. The board are looking for a mid table finish. This isn't going to be the same kind of season as the last few have been. I think we've finally hit an upper limit for us for now. And we're going to probably be in this league for a year or two or three while we try and figure out a way to get out of it and go professional as part of the same thing. So, let's passionately say... Actually, let's calmly... We'll do the calm, we're huge underdogs. Because we are. Um, it's Swindon, for goodness sake. We're playing Swindon in a league match. This is... the. <laughs> it's only our fifth season. Five, f four and a bit years ago, we didn't exist. And now we're playing Swindon in the league. So... Yes, we should be underdogs. And does Swindon wear red? Because to me, every player on that pitch is wearing the same shirt. So, colourblind Kev strikes again. I'm not going to have any idea what's going on. Um, but that does prove our shirts are green. There's been a few people trying to tell me our shirts are black. They're absolutely green. And certainly as shirts start to arrive in people's letterboxes for people who've ordered them, um, hopefully you'll be able to see as well that they're, they're green when they arrive. Um, the link to buy shirts, by the way, is down in the description. They are awesome. Connor Stanley now charging down the right wing, plays it into Mick Powell, number nine on his shirt now. Now we've got squad numbers because we're in the Conference National. Um, so if you are ordering a shirt, you want nine Powell on the back. Fernandez with the corner, doesn't find a green, not black, green shirt. And Swindon are on the attack. And Diallo comes across to cover. Diallo, who spent the summer at the World Cup. So we've now got a World Cup, not winner, a player with experience of the World Cup in our team as well. I mean, he was here last year, but now he's played in the World Cup. He hadn't done that before, and that's awesome. Cottrell now, ball over the top to Powell. Powell gets there first, and Mick Powell has scored his first. He didn't count. Oh, I got a bit excited for a minute there. It's the first time I've been able to get excited without having a coughing fit in about a month. And it got disallowed. I'm going to refuse excitement from now on if that's what happens. Right, Swindon are coming at us again. One thing I am thinking for this season, if we do start badly, and we are now 1-0 down, if we do start badly, it's going to be a case of how long can we keep going with our control possession tactic that served us so well for three years now. The back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back has all been about 
being we've had the best players and we've played pretty dominant attacking possession controlling football that's because we've generally had the best players in every division we've been in we don't have anybody in the media dream 11 this year mick powell wasn't mentioned when they were talking about favorites to be top scorer in the division and we're two nil down after 18 minutes i think we might be in for a reality check over the coming weeks and i do hope i don't get sacked if sir Enoch knew who's watching and i'd like to think he is Please don't sack me, Sir Enoch. This is the first time since like a month into the first season that I've been genuinely afraid. We've had a terrible summer. We've not strengthened the squad at all. If anything, we've weakened the squad because all the loans that were here last year aren't here now. And um, we're being battered, absolutely battered on the opening day. Connor Stanley, we've turned down so many big money offers for him in the summer and he's just snapped. We literally watched the man break in two. Fantastic. We're paying him over a grand a week and he's just broken himself. And the, I've got I've got Cameron Archer to come on. Levi Potton retired in the summer. Cameron Archer scored one goal for us ever. He wasn't good enough last year. We're going to bring on Matty Wolf or George Hornshaw. I don't know what to do. I'm already stuck. Football manager just got hard. Wolf's going to go out. You're just going to have to go and play as a winger and like it. We can't change the system around yet. We don't have we don't have anyone on the bench who can help us change the system. Why do we only get five subs? It's ridiculous. Mick Powell then, in behind, and it's straight up the keeper again. Powell's going to need to be a more efficient finisher this season, I think. he's um, He's always been one of these strikers who scores as many goals as he does because he gets so many chances. He misses a lot of them, but can get so many that he scores an extraordinary amount of goals. But he's not going to get that many chances this season. He needs to be a little bit more. I mean, we he it could be two one at least. Oh, this has been a sad first half, and if Connor Stanley's proper injured, it's double sad. Um, there's nothing to lose today. Go out there and give it your best shot. Oh, that sounds awful. Um, in fact, yeah, unlucky boys, things just haven't gone our way so far. I mean, that's fair. We had a goal disallowed. We've had one of our best players injured. And we've not looked very good. But let's not focus on those parts of it. We could easily tell a narrative here of it's just not been our day. And hopefully that helps take the pressure off a little bit more. And we can at least look competitive in the second half, which we didn't really in that first half. We've controlled possession, but done nothing with it. And Swindon are coming at us again. And they've just got better quality than we have. Oh, dear. I don't like the National League, everybody. I don't like it. I want to go back and do the National League North again. Oh, this is horrible. I feel dirty. I want to go and play easy football. We're home. We don't lose matches. We certainly don't lose 3-0 or 4-0 or 5-0 or whatever this is going to be. Oh... And I'm looking at the, the Connor Stanley injury thinking he's going to be out for three months, isn't he? We could have sold him for 150 grand. We could have signed Ryan Broom permanently if we'd have offered him two grand a week, but I refused. I'm still thinking like a like a Northern Premier League manager. Cottrell now, across to Carter. Carter's not good enough for this level. Critchlow Noble's not good enough for this level. Mick Powell is hopefully going to prove to be good enough for this level, but he's missed again. Wolf now with the cross over to Lerick Fernandez. We need him to give us hope Critchlow Noble to Smith to Powell Mick Powell has scored everybody we finally have a goal and it's 3-1 and the commentary at the bottom is being a little bit ambitious is that a route back into the game for home I would say it's unlikely but at least Mick Powell has uh, he's not going to go on a long run of games not scoring at this level he's already got his first National League goal and hopefully he's now going to be on a mission to prove the doubters wrong and can't get a hat trick, Mick. Get a hat trick. Mick Powell's fired up. Right, Cameron Archer can just stay on the bench. There's no reason to bring him on. Axon White is one of our new players. We'll bring him on. And I'm going to bring Hornshaw on for Lerick Fernandez, who's been a disappointment. Um, what can we do? What can we do? We're going to make you an advanced playmaker, but I want you on attack. And then you are going to be, yeah, be a Mazala. That's basically our Fulham midfield there. Different players, but same instructions. 
and hopefully we don't pick up another injury. And Cameron Archer, this is just my way of telling him, there's probably not any point in you being on the bench. I'm very unlikely to ever bring you on. We need to sign another striker. Pronto. Right, Phillips intercepts, plays it forward towards absolutely nobody. I don't, I don't know what we were trying to achieve there. All we've done is put ourselves back under pressure. It's with Cottrell, who, I mean, he should be fresh. He had a whole season of not playing last year, just like Stanley. Mick Powell's in again. With eight minutes to go, it's 3-2. And all of a sudden, Mick Powell's done a Mick Powell, and he has actually handed as a lifeline. Cottrell's going to get an assist, but really, this is all Mick Powell because he's beaten the man himself there. He's used his pace and power, and it's a top-quality finish. Can Mick Powell finish off a hat-trick? His first game in the number nine chair. He's won number 10 all the way previously, but he's number nine now. And, um, I mean, 3-2 is a lot less embarrassing than 3-0 was. I'm impressed with what we've done in this second half. We took the pressure off, and we have sort of made ourselves look competitive. We're still not going to get anything from the game but we were never supposed to get anything from the game it's away we're away from home against a team who are far too good to be playing at this level so let's calmly say I can't fault the effort you put in because I can't we did well in the end but now we go to the home of football for the first time we get to have a look at the new ground and fingers crossed get our first points at this level against Dagenham who also feel like a team they're too good to be at this level. Oh, how good a Swindon? Swindon are the third best team in the league and we weren't embarrassed. That gives me hope. Dagenham are the fifth best though and that makes me sad again. What a, what a start to the season. Oh, just in case anyone thought we were now a big club with all these reputation increases and promotions. We've sold 86 season tickets. The home of football is going to look like nobody's home. ho, ho. Forget everything I just said. 3,200 tickets have been sold for the first game at the home of football. Only 200 of them to Dagenham Thams. The 3,000 who came to Wembley with us, the 3,000 who went to Old Trafford, they're all turning up for the first game of the new season. I assume they're not going to stay with us because you'd have thought we might have sold another 20 season tickets. But if we put on a show, you never know. No pressure. Just browsing this and I've just noticed Sir Enoch New who's made it onto the favoured personnel. I love that. I don't know why yet. I guess because he's the chairman and we've done brilliant. But I love the fact that Sir Enoch New who is now favoured personnel at home. Oh, the villagers are wonderful people. Connor Stanley's going to be injured for the first month or so of the season now. So that's one of two changes we've made to the team for our debut at the home of football. Harrop comes in on the right-hand side. James Harrop is someone we brought in in the summer. One of the most exciting signings that we brought in um, was previously at Wolves. Hopefully he can just make himself a superstar. And also Matty Wolf replaces Leric Fernandez in the centre of midfield. Uh, Fernandez just didn't look that good. I hope he just needs time. Um, we're putting a lot of hope on him because he's, his star ratings shot up so much as part of him doing a Mick Powell. But remember, he's still played less than 10 games for us ever. So we don't want to rush him too much. Let's get into the game and then also have a proper look at the new ground. Um, right, let's passionately say, let's give the fans something to cheer. There's so many of them here that using the fans might be might be the way forward. So this is what the home of football looks like. Is there a way to zoom out and have a proper look at it? What camera angles can we go to? Um, let's go to, I don't want to do 2D classic. Data analyst takes you way out, doesn't it? So let's get that out of the way. So we've got terracing, terracing. I guess they're the seats and there's probably more terracing on this side. It doesn't look like anything's undercover, but I mean, I'd now see why this ground only cost us £750,000 because it's not it's not like Fylde's ground as a non-league ground, is it? But what were we on before? 2D Classic. Not 2D Classic. Ha! What do you think this is? 1994. We're on TV. There we go. We'll have a proper look at the other sides of it when we see replays. Well, no, there are roofs. It just didn't look like there were, but there are roofs on there. Now it does look more impressive. And Ben Cottrell goes down in history as the first goal scorer at the home of football. And look at the prawn sandwich brigade there on their seats. There's loads of them. 
So that must be terracing on this side. Have we got roo- have we got roofs all the way around? Perhaps this is as good as the AFC filed ground. If you haven't seen that one, you should Google it. I found myself Googling it recently when I couldn't work out what a filed was. And the ground is beautiful. But yeah, that's a nice little undercover terrace where the home faithful hang out. And then we've got a covered terrace at this end for the away fans. Phillips, with the chance to get across in, doesn't beat his man. But Diallo picks it up again and it's with Smith across to Wolf, back to Smith again. Smith, beautiful pass out to Critchlow Noble, who crosses it over to nobody. But Harrop's there. Harrop forces the save. And I thought for a second there we'd won a penalty, but perhaps we hadn't. The ground looks full. Imagine if we could get this many people to turn up week in, week out. That would be a tall order. Our average attendance last season was about 400. I know most of these people are just here because they wanted to come and have a look. But let's just say we win 6-0 today against a promotion favourite like Dagenham. Then surely they come back. We're not going to win 6-0, are we? But we're winning at half-time. We're playing well. You've got, I think, a thousand of them come back, surely, to the nice shiny new ground. Um, let's passionately set. We've got to keep doing this for the fans. Let's give the fans something to cheer. I know that's not necessarily motivating the team, but I need I need to tell the game that I am appreciative of the amount of people who are here. Three thousand four hundred people here, and Mick Powell's got his first goal at the home of football in front right. What's that end going to be called, everybody? The terrace behind the goal where the home fans hang out. I know so many of you hate the home of football as a name. What's that terrace called behind the goal? Because goodness me, as Mick, we're getting another replay. Mick Powell, suspicions are offside. He wasn't though, and look how hard he's hit it. Oh, that's how you. That's how you. I'm excited again now. Forget the negativity for the first half of this episode. We're looking good again, boys and girls. Awesome stuff. I want to see suggestions for that terrace behind the goal in today's comments. And you can't name it in game, but we can name it. We can, if you if you hate the ground name, let's at least love the terrace. And you can all hang out behind the goal. Those of you, like me, who prefer a comfortable seat and a prawn sandwich, you're happy with it being called the home of football. Those of you who want something a bit more gritty and non-league and realistic, you can go and stand up next to the pint glasses full of urine behind the goal and call it what you like. Right, Harrop is injured. We're going to take him off. We're going to bring on Lerick Fernandez, And he can now play out of position like Wolf had to in the last game. Shane Phillips is not playing well and on a yellow card. Axon White can play there. So let's play him there. And watch us throw the game away now with those two substitutions that have drastically weakened the quality of the side. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid. I've, I, the temptation to make a third change is is very real as well, but I'm going to resist the temptation because I can see what's on the bench and I find it utterly uninspiring. But Cottrell's now picked up an injury as well. This is a problem. We need our players to stop getting injured. Right, we're going to have to bring on Cameron Archer. Never expected to give that man a game at this level. I mean, why are we... St- I guess we just have to do this. It's the only sensible thing to do with this arrangement of players. You want to be a poacher, do you? There you go. It's only for two minutes, but we've already abandoned the system that got us here to do something that looks an awful lot like a Kev Classic. It's not quite, but goodness me, is it nearly there. (laughs) You knew it was coming sooner or later. I've been so well behaved since FM19 has been out. We've not done it once. Those of you who are new for this year, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Those of you who've been around a while know it's coming. I'm surprised I've done 150 episodes of FM19 now and not used it yet. You'll see it soon. I'm sure you will. The time will come where I won't be able to resist it. But that was an excellent performance. Well played, gentlemen. And hopefully we now get a surge of season ticket sales after the game. If Sir Enoch knew who is, he's got his business head screwed on and he's looking at the future of the club, after that match he just comes out onto the pitch and says, by the way, half price season tickets if you buy them right now, while everyone's happy about the win, and just take the financial hit. We're better off having 3,000 people in on half price season tickets than 86 people in on full price ones. Surely. Right, then those injuries aren't too serious. That's good. 
everybody's happy, especially me. What an emotional roller coaster this episode has been. And we will be back. Let's give it half a dozen games or so, somewhere around Torquay. When do the Cups start? Do we not have to do all the FA Cup qualifying now at this level? Somewhere around there. We want another home game. So it'll either be Kidderminster or Billericay plus Torquay in the middle. I think, oh, we could we could go to Fylde. We could do Billericay and, and Fylde and do a proper comparison of the grounds. That would be nice. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.